What's up guys, welcome to my second Let's Play for Thea 2 The Shattering. A ton has changed since the first Let's Play back in Early Access. We have uh, new features, reworked mechanics, we have better polish, a ton of balance changes, and uh, the game has really come together quite nicely now that it's in the full release. So a lot of my viewers have been following since uh, Early Access, uh, but I understand there's a lot of new viewers as well. So I will be trying to find the best balance between uh, keeping a good pace in the game and um, making sure that I explain things as I go. Some of my older videos you can probably ignore at this point because some of the strategies we used to use are no longer possible in the game. But definitely look forward to my upcoming videos. I'm going to be making some more guides and stuff uh, while I do this Let's Play. If you have any questions about the game, you can just post them in the comments or you can come find me on Twitch or in my Discord. I'm definitely happy to help. So let's go ahead and get started. I created a brand new profile for this Let's Play. So we're starting a new game and uh, <clears throat> we only have two gods randomly unlocked from the start. I am going to be playing on 200% difficulty, which is hard mode. We can see now that we have character god cards and bonus god cards separated. On hard difficulty, we only have four character points that we can use. Um, so we chose Svarog. We're going to use a craftsman, a warrior, a scoundrel, and two children. That's a pretty balanced party for the beginning of the game, I think, for two neutral slots uh, here at the end. We'll use Granny's Pantry to get some extra food. And uh, with one of our starting god points, I'm actually going to unlock 40x basic supplies. On hard difficulty, you start in the winter, and it's pretty brutal. It's uh, much harder to gather things, and it's two fuel per turn to camp instead of one. So having these extra supplies is nice. Our unique bonus as Svarog is each character gets a plus 20% bonus to crafting, a little bit extra health and sanity, and we have a little bit lower gathering. So we're good crafters, a little bit worse gatherers, and slightly tankier. We're going to choose a child to be our chosen, and we're going to make that child female. The reason for that is that uh, female children can get the option to grow up into witches, but males cannot. They don't have access to that class. So this is a little trick to guarantee that you have a... Uh, at least a chance at obtaining a witch. They're pretty strong classes. Well, hello there, Chosen. Welcome into the service of the gods. As I am a believer myself, I am happy to be the one to guide you. So we have a lot of really nice voice acting now in the game, which is good for me because now I don't have to uh, read every single line. But I will go ahead and skip even a lot of this stuff because um, I don't want this to be a very spoilery let's play in terms of like the quests. I think it's fun for players to enjoy that themselves. But you know, as far as strategies and gameplay goes, I would love to show that off. You can press Q and that shows uh, all the resources on the map. It's the hotkey for it. So let's go ahead and move. And let's check our party. We have a lot of new uh, tool tips and uh, tutorials in the game. But I'm going to skip through this. So we have some children. So this child takes 38 turns to grow up. Decent abilities here on the warrior. This child takes 43 turns to grow up. Quite a long time. I'm actually going to put the boar, which has a, an extra movement point bonus, on one of the children. Because children have less movement points than adults by default. And I'm going to put this codex on somebody who has decent mysticism or intelligence stat, because that's uh, the stat that those two skills scale off of, respectively. So that would probably be the scoundrel. Put it on the scoundrel for now. The warrior should definitely be equipping the uh, better armor at this point. It's really nice to have a warrior uh, in the start of the game because it is a little bit difficult to survive uh, in this brutal winter. So Theodore, our good friend from Theo1, he wants us to cook him some food. He's also partially a, a, a nice tutorial. So we'll go move a little bit more. Not very many resources on this map, but we'll camp and at the end of the turn, we will cook some food. We go into the cooking menu here. We will cook meat with berries. We'll go ahead and favorite it. And let's take a couple people on it. Wait the turn again. 
We do have the crafter, which is nice. So we got a nice cooking stat. Real quick, we want to make sure that we are taking advantage of food type bonuses. And cooking is a great way to do that. We also don't want to use up our coal right now. But as you can see, the bonuses from having high morale are quite uh, significant. The system is different from Thea 1. It's not just that uh, you get the bonuses based on what you ate the previous turn, but you actually build up this number. So if you have 10 food times, for example, then you'll gain 10 morale per turn until you reach the maximum of 100. And it's also really important because mental HP uh, drains from your morale in order to heal itself. Let's go ahead and uncamp and start moving around again. All right, so some bees are attacking us. And we could all resolve it decently well. But I'll go ahead and show off uh, an actual fight. So we have our preparation phases, which means that we get to alternate turns with the enemy, placing our cards. I think I'll go ahead and put down you with an Ice Spike spell first. Enemy places down a B. I'm going to go ahead and use my Warrior now. He's got the first strike ability. Uh, javelins, pole arms, and spears have the first strike ability, which is very similar to how it worked in Thea 1. So when we place it down, and you could actually place yourself down using Poison Throwing Dagger, because that's an innate skill that you have, then you get the first strike ability to do some instant damage. And that's pretty nice. I think with another AP, we could go ahead and put um, you down. You can shoot an arrow. Bows have free targeting attacks. You can tell by the little tooltip here. You can select any target when her turn comes up. So I think at this point, we just need to do a little bit more damage. We'll do another first strike. We do have a boar also. And we're going to summon that boar in front of this guy, I think. So this enemy has the strength of the swarm skill which um, makes it so that every time that you play another card onto the field, this card's attack power goes up. So enemies that have this are a little bit annoying. But we have a boar. So we're going to go ahead and summon that. Uh, we have to make sure to tank some of this damage. And it might be best to put the summon here. It'll block the damage from... I think both of these bees, they'll hit the closest target. And the way that that works, this bee and this bee will both hit this boar. This bee on the right will hit uh, this warrior. This bee on the left will hit this warrior. But the warrior should have enough shield in to tank a couple hits. With our last AP, well, I guess uh, you could go out there and throw a punch. So there's one dead, there's two dead. Now the last B, we got to tank this hit. I don't think that we're actually going to be able to kill it before it does damage to our child. That was a little bit of a miscalculation, but we are well alive. It's not that strong of a, uh, of a creature. We did pretty much as well as the uh, auto resolve would have done. But since we are injured, we are gonna wanna make sure that we camp on the end of the next turn, so that we can heal a lot of damage. Let's see, in the winter, fish are actually uh, still pretty easy to gather. You can tell by the circle around the resources, right? If it's a green full circle, then it's it's normal gathering proficiency. But um, the fruit, for example, it's really difficult to gather the fruit in the winter. We'll go ahead and end our turn here. We actually don't have enough gathering to be able to finish it in one turn. I don't think we're going to stay in place. We want to move around and um, actually hit up objectives, ruins maybe, get some loot. Most importantly, we want to get EXP and research points. Alright, so Theodore shows up. He gives us the next little part of his tutorial quest. We get a little bit of food, actually some alcohol. And he wants us to go check out an abandoned house. 
We get our first level ups. So, we get um, our crafter to get plus two strength or one intelligence. I always like to specialize characters. This crafter actually has decent strength to start with. Five is not horrible. So I might give him two strength and see if he can become a warrior crafter hybrid. The warrior, of course, wants strength. The scoundrel, let's go for that intelligence. She starts with decently high intelligence. So we'll go ahead and stack it and specialize. The two children from the god card are a little bit better than standard children. They have some stats that they start with three points in, not just uh, two points in everything like most children. Giving plus two strength to the guy that already has two strength may be good, or if we give him one wisdom, he will uh, have four wisdom, which is the threshold for having the possibility of being able to grow up into a Zerka. I think I'm going to just go ahead with the plus two strength here. So she started with one extra point in intelligence and perception. Well, if we get to four perception, he possibly will have a grow up into a hunter, which is a great class. Or <clears throat> we may be able to try to get her to be a witch. Uh, but we need four mysticism for that. And plus one mysticism is not quite enough. Still, we should be able to get plenty of level ups before they actually grow up. Let's go for that one mysticism now and start working towards the possibility of getting a witch. All right, the abandoned house is over here. I'm going to walk around it. When we go near a terrain artifact, we can try to gather them, just like anything else you would gather. They take quite a lot of gathering though, but once we gather it, then we can go to the research screen and it'll pop up as a different uh, item. And you can uh, research it for a big boost. It's like 30 boost for terrain artifacts and 15 boost for uh, a creature corpse. That boost goes towards your advancement points. So that's the best way to gain more advancement points, which are going to be important later in the game. But for now, we'll just keep on moving. We still need to heal. She's still a little bit injured, but um, we may not need to use that piece of wood right now. It costs us two pieces of wood in the winter actually to camp. Unfortunately, we have to cross all these mountains, so that's really bad for our movement points. But as you can see here, we also have a very nice mini-map now in the game. We always start uh, on the island in the middle, but uh, the other islands that are around are also color-coded. I won't spoil them right now, but um, the uh, neutral factions and the types of resources are always the same for each island. So you can actually tell which island is which. Sometimes a little bit farther away, sometimes they're not always just in a circle around the starting island. And we finally reach the abandoned hut. So we go on in. Outline cards are conceptual challenges, which means that you don't retain damage after the challenge, but also you don't get to use your skills from your weapons. You can only use your innate skills. We're going to go ahead and do this. This is usually a bit easier. So it's an easy auto resolve. And we get some nice EXP. So the next part of the quest will pop up soon. Let's go up here, because I don't really want um, this next village to appear in like a weird part of the island. I kind of want it to appear in a central area. You can build a village by crafting an idol. So you go here to the crafting screen, you go to buildings, and you can craft an idol. You have to use your cosmic seed, and you can use, uh, well, wood, gems, stone, bone. If you go to design mode, you can see what you could make, like how strong of an idol you could make with resources that you don't actually have. But for example, we just craft it out of bone, gives us a little bit of gathering and crafting, and a, an extra gathering range. So your default gathering range is one. If you get a plus one, then it would be uh, two total. If we use a little bit better materials that we get later, such as ancient wood, we're gonna get much better of a crafting gathering boost and a gathering radius of plus two, which is three total. And that's very, very nice to have in a village. But uh, I personally don't like settling a village too early. 
Let's go ahead and keep exploring. See if we can find uh, some other neutral factions. All right. So here we get our task. We got a little blessing on the female child. We're being slowed down by the snow, I think. Weather effects can have a pretty, uh, pretty intense effect on you. So it seems like the snow is decreasing our movement speed. It sure is. So the village spawned over here. Gonna cross back over these mountains. We gotta keep an eye on our fuel and food. We've only got 18 turns of food, five turns of fuel. So that's a pretty big challenge when you start in the winter time. We've got 25 more turns of winter. That's what this counter is over here until we hit the spring. A little snake, huh? This time I will just manual or auto resolve it. it take a tiny bit of damage, but camping one time will heal that pretty quickly. It's not really safe to auto resolve unless it's in the green. I would normally not auto resolve if it was in the yellow or the, uh, especially the red. Somebody could uh, have a, quite a high chance of dying if it's in the red. Now we get another level up, but this time we get to choose between skills instead of stats. I think we're gonna get the showing off skill. It's pretty strong for mental challenges. Should be a nice fit for him. I think that for the warrior, probably gonna have a weapon to attack so I don't think that uh, poison throwing dagger is that worthwhile but parry is really nice because it's passive shielding to all challenges actually you can see that little icon has all three colors so he'll get a little bit tankier and more useful for all types of challenges for our scoundrel we're just gonna go increase gathering scoundrels make pretty good gatherers anyway for our child here let's see what he already has reliable argument we could give them some uh, extra gathering or we could give them battle orders, which I think might be pretty useful, especially for the early game. You can add some shielding to some allies, up to three allies. She already had the hurry up skill, so let's level that up to level two. It'll get pretty good at higher levels. It uh, decreases your delay so that uh, you can have somebody act faster than somebody else. So we're now in the village. They want us to find somebody else. Gain a little bit of reputation here, which is great. So it takes 50 reputation to get friendly. It shows us how much we got and what our total is. The Slavians are the human faction. Once you get friendly with a faction, you typically are able to recruit at least one uh, new villager from them. And it's a good way to get uh, some characters of the other races once you find those factions. So I think we need to camp and heal a little bit. We're not super injured, but mm, you know what? Let's let's save that wood. Another pack of beasts. It's in the green again, so I will auto resolve it. Tiny injuries there. And the next part of the quest should just automatically pop up. We'll keep walking around for a bit. We want to explore anyway. You can actually toggle the minimap. Uh, here is Mr. Zbigniew, the heretic chosen. It doesn't really matter what you choose here. It all leads to the same thing. You can toggle the minimap here to show just your island, but a zoomed in version. So now we should actually go back to the village. We actually walked quite a bit farther than we probably should have. A sudden storm catches you off guard. Hmm. We'll do this. There's always some uh, random chance for something good or bad to happen. We actually ended up getting a blessing. The turmoil domain helped us out here. We got a physical blessing. Physical blessings are really good because uh, you get increased movement points as well. And of course we love that EXP. So can we gather this wood in one turn? Not quite. Let's keep moving and we're gonna go to this village. Uh oh, big snowstorm here. I don't like that. Reduces visibility range by three and movement points by two. Well met. 
Now that Smicknib is no longer troubling you or us, we can welcome you properly. Alright, so going to the tavern is always pretty nice, especially early in the game. There's a cooldown on a lot of this stuff, like trading, going to the tavern. But if we go drinking, we gain nut tinctures. We get some free alcohol. So extra food types, extra food for our survival. And sometimes something good can happen, something bad can happen, like you can get uh, you can get sick. But she gained some max HP, however she lost 10 sanity, so she's going to have to recover that. And it seems like she got into a brawl, so we lost a little bit of, of reputation. And it was lucky that we didn't go back to zero, because if we went to zero, we would be hostile. So we're at one. <laughs> We'll go into this village again. This time we're going to ask if there's a quest we could help with. Does anything need killing? Yes. So they want us to get rid of a bunch of vermin nesting nearby. I will do that. Since we're still here, we're going to go back in there. And I think we're going to visit the kennels. Hopefully I have some stuff I can trade. I didn't really pay too much attention to that. We're going to buy a cat. A trained spider is something that can be summoned, but only in physical challenges. It's not as good as a boar, and we have a boar already. It's never bad to have multiple summons. But a cat provides a stat boost to mysticism. So our uh, female child here, who has now three mysticism, if she equips a cat before she grows up, she'll have four mysticism, which is the threshold of possibly getting the chance to become a witch. It's still just a chance. I'm going to see if we can buy this cat. It only costs 20. In some trades, everything is worth one. So this is one of those examples. So we want to just trade a large quantity of stuff that's not worth very much. And we don't have very much stuff to give, to be honest. But it is worth getting this cat. I hate to get rid of food also, but we're going to get rid of some. Okay, so we didn't have much to spare, but it's worth getting this cat right now. And it's actually a really strong cat. I thought I was just going to give a uh, low-level cat with only one bar filled, but we got a quite a bit stronger one. 2 plus 2 increased mysticism. For now, it might be better to equip the cat on this uh, character who is actually using a skill based on mysticism. But we have to remember, before she grows up, in 21 turns, we're going to want to put the cat on her. You can also rest in towns, which is kind of like instant healing. So they're kind of like safe zones. Are we injured right now? We're not really that injured. Let's see, I think we want to trade here. We want to just get some more food and stuff if possible. Food and fuel. Although we don't have very much that we can give away. Cooked food is worth quite a lot though. So we can trade some nut tinctures away. And we can get some mushrooms and vegetables. I would love to get some of this other stuff, like maybe some armor and uh, herbs. But we can't actually afford anything right now. Alright, so I will camp here. I'll make sure that we're able to burn uh, coal. Just so that we don't run out. And we had a little bit of uh, health that we need to recover. So let's go ahead and camp. Ooh, let's try to get through these mountains in the snow. It's not pretty. We want to go here. And this way, you can get to this quest. So you find the vermin nest, you're set to clear, and we're going to attack them. It's a difficulty 2 fight, but it's still pretty easy to auto resolve. I'm not sure if I could do better than this by resolving manually, so I think I'm just going to accept the outcome. Very nice. Very little wounds. We got a shield, could be useful for someone right now. And we gain more loyalty, that's the most important part here. 
But once you get 50 loyalty, you still can't quite um, just so easily recruit uh, another villager. You have to go to a capital. So this is a special village that's for um, the quest. It does count as the Slavian faction, but it does not count as a capital, of course. The capitals always have a banner flying around in the middle. So even though we know that this village here is kind of like our safe spot, we do want to go out and explore and see if we can find another village. There also could be other factions on this island. So we might want to just start moving to the west maybe, exploring more where all this fog of war is. Here's some more rats. Should be an easy battle. Yep, this time we can do it with no wounds. And we're going to start our voyage to the west. Wow, more, more plus two strength uh, for a crafter. That's really nice. Plus one strength for a warrior. So our crafter basically has the same amount of strength as the warrior now. We're going to take, hmm, for the scoundrel, they tend to be a little bit better in the yellow stats. So I'm wondering if I should just take the plus two wisdom since she's not going to get too many opportunities to, uh, to level up mysticism. Wisdom also helps with gathering, which they're kind of naturally good at. The male child, we're going to go with that plus two wisdom. He's going to be at five strength and five uh, wisdom. So hopefully he'll have some nice choices when he grows up. All right, let's keep on moving. Ooh, there was a layer over there that I clicked on. I didn't realize. We can go ahead and clear this layer, maybe. This is a little bit more wounds than we would like to take. Here, we can we can go into the fight. We can kind of see how tough it is. Maybe we can defeat it better manually. So maybe we put in an ice spike. She'll do an ice spike from the back room. How strong are these guys? They're not super weak. We only have one board of tank damage. We can always run away near the end. Okay, this is just saying that we can uh, save our AP, which is these gear icons, up to the next placement phase, which is what we want to do. I want to see what else they place before I use my AP. And if I want to place my warrior out again, for example, I need two AP this time because I've already used them once. Same with my scoundrel. And if I want to place that person a third time, it's going to take three AP. And they'll come out as clones of each other, which means they're just multiple instances of the same person. They'll do damage multiple times. They also take damage multiple times. Can be deadly uh, if the enemy has AOE attacks, splash damage, because you'll get hit multiple times for one attack. But. I think I want to do this attack. This spider should be should be dead. So as long as we don't end this turn, which is the last turn of the placement phase, then we can still run away. But I wonder if we can win this. Can we kill this guy before he acts? Well, we have one hit here. We have an ice spike here, which is not quite fast enough. We could take both of these hits and then kill this thing on its second turn. We do seven poison damage, which does extra damage when they're already injured. Uh, so I think the seven will turn into at least a nine, which is it's gonna kill it in two turns. So if I put a boar here, that might be good enough to tank this. All right, so this boar will count as the closest target for this guy as well. So the boar will tank both of these hits, but then it'll get killed off. The problem is they have another AP left and they can probably play another guy out. And that's not gonna be the best for us. Maybe I wanna add some shielding. I can choose three characters 
If I choose the clone of the same character, it does hit them twice. Let's just do this. Let's see, how does this look? We're taking 26 damage, we're still 3 on the shields. We're going to take this 9 damage. It's probably going to be 10 because of Strength of the Swarm. So we're going to lose 7 HP. They're going to play another guy. I don't know where they're going to place it. It could be here, here, here. But I don't think we're at risk of dying or anything. We'll go ahead and, uh, and end this turn. Okay, so they go here. That's another 7 damage that's going to go to this guy's face. Alright, so took a little bit of damage. We actually were able to kill off those guys before they attacked, because this ice spike went faster. This is not bad at all. Okay, so now we're on the second combat round. And as you can see, we don't recover our shields, we don't get the shields back. However, we can summon another boar and it'll come back completely fresh. So summons are absolutely amazing. They've already placed themselves out, so I would love to um, just go ahead and do this. Get some first strike damage in. We'll probably place another ice spike. All right, these spiders could probably get tanked pretty well by a boar. I think that I might try to play another throwing dagger hit. We can go in the back, or if we put ourselves in the front, hmm. I think the first strike damage, if we use a spear attack, the first strike damage will be able to pierce. We have some vertical splash damage. It's pretty good. See what else they do. Let's get the last turn this time. So we can react to what they do. Let's put a boar here. It can tank quite a bit of damage. I think we're gonna do some shielding. Let's do this. We're gonna shield these guys. And we're going to take some damage, but we'll be okay. There's one down. There's a big hit, unfortunately. There's a little hit. So that one's down. That's a big hit, but we should be able to kill this off before it gets this next attack. One more spider left. He's not quite dead, but he's alone now. And we can actually just kill him very easily without even having to, to do the battle. First strike damage, I love it. All right, so we get a bunch of meat. We get research material. And we get a bunch of research points and experience points. Excellent. We definitely want to make sure that we're camping so we can heal up that damage we took. But that's going to be it for this episode, guys. I hope you're enjoying it so far. If you are, like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave something down in the comments, or you can come find me in my Discord or Twitch. Guys, I'll see you very shortly in the next episode.